Hello and welcome to another round of the Championship Predictions from the Orange Football Podcast. I'm Craig Savage and with me as always is Mr. Daniel Cody. We are back after an international break, but what happened before the international break? There were nine games. How did we get on? Uh, one perfect score overall, uh, not the best of weekends. Uh, the perfect score was for my 2-0 Sheffield United win against Barnsley. Overall, as I said, wasn't pretty. Uh, five points to three in my honour. So let's start again it's the business end of the championship season all the international breaks are done it's the road to the playoffs and promotion and relegation but we start off with a big game at, but well actually not a big game of both sides of the table because one's pretty much safe it's Hull on Friday night they are playing Huddersfield at the KCOM MKM uh, stadium uh, you obviously went to Hull they lost 3-1 against Luton and Huddersfield lost 3-0 at home to Bournemouth so Let's start off with Hull. You went to watch them live. Um, how were they? It was a strange one, really, actually. The first half, they were by far the better side. I think most of us in the area thought we were pretty fortunate to be 1-0 up at the break. I am a bit annoyed because James Bree's perfect free kick ruined a perfect score for me, but we'll get to that later on. I thought Hull, it's a similar story for most of the season. They were really decent in that first half, but they don't have a cutting edge. They're reliant on Keen Lewis Potter, who was basically double marks out of the game for large parts. And defensively, they were trying to play out. They were trying to play their new shot of ball that they never would have played under Grant McCann. And they got caught a couple of times. So work to do there. But as you mentioned, they're virtually safe now. And Huddersfield are a side that are suddenly out of form. It's amazing when that winning run came to an end in all competitions now, four without a win, only one point against West Brom in those games. And they're sliding. They're four points away from falling out of the playoffs. They've played the most games. And how often we see the team that's there nearly all season fall out towards the end. And it could happen to both them and QPR as it stands. And even Blackburn too. I think they'll bounce back here because they press high in the front three. And Hull, they'll make mistakes there. They haven't got enough of a ruthless edge. But it'll be tense. 2-1 Huddersfield because they're never great games on Sky, are they, Friday night? No, I'm going to go 2-0 to Huddersfield. Uh, I think they'll bounce back. It was a... Am a blow losing 3 0 and lost 3 0 quite comfortably, uh, as well. So, you've got to give Bournemouth a lot of credit on that. They've got to be careful, as you said, got to be careful because there's only two points above the playoff team. Uh, the other teams are outside the playoffs and they've obviously played the most and it might have to rely on other teams picking up results against them. So, a bit of play. I think this will be fine. Hull, yeah, the second goal was what I'd moaned about Swansea all season. And uh, and that's what Luton have been doing all season uh, with the high press from Adebayo and Cornick and Jerome. And uh, it, they got caught out. And uh, obviously, you, you can't save those with a breeze free kick. But I think Huddersfield will bounce back. It's going to be another defeat for Hull. So I'm going to go by two goals to nil. Right, next up is the other TV game for this weekend. Considering the rest of the fixtures I've seen for this weekend, I'm surprised this one's the, the TV fixture. But it's Blackpool versus Nottingham Forest. Uh, Blackpool didn't play last weekend. They had the weekend off and Nottingham Forest lost 1-0 to Liverpool in the FA Cup. I think, this, to be honest, this is two of the form teams in the Championship going by March. I mean, Blackpool have won three out of four. Forest have done exactly the same. I've said this before. For me, outside the top two, Forest are the favourites to go up. If you take their record just since Steve Cooper joined, he's done a ridiculous job. They're exciting to watch. They're good defensively. I mean, everything about them as a neutral you would enjoy. I don't know. Blackpool are such a stubborn side. They haven't let in a goal for three games. But when they've come up against those really top sides this season, they've had a little bit of a mixed bag. I think Forrest will have enough, but I don't like banking against Blackpool because they're so solid. I'm going to go 2-1 to the visitors again, although everything in my head is screaming Championship's favourite scoreline. And that's exactly what I've gone for. It's the championship phase <laughs> scoreline of 1-1. I, I, I think Blackpool have been really good lately. Forest have been excellent. Blackpool, as you said, Blackpool at home do tend to turn it on, like turn it up against the, the, the higher teams. They, they drew with Sheffield United. They held Bournemouth for pretty much nine minutes and blew it. I think they're pretty good at home. Crowd on by the early fixture, down by the seaside. I would say the weather would be nice, but it's probably, the weather's going to probably be rubbish. I'm going to championship phase scoreline of 1-1. Right, big game. 21st v 22nd. Barnsley at home to Reading. Barnsley lost 2 0 to Sheffield United, and Reading won crucially 1 0 against Blackburn. Yeah, I mean, how this isn't on TV, I don't know. It's the game of the weekend for me because if Barnsley win it, 
It's two points behind with a better goal difference. It's a must-win game. It is a must-win game for Barnsley. For Reading, it is a must-not-lose game. And I wonder if that's going to affect the setup. They did concede chances against Blackburn, but we all know that Blackburn have had struggles in front of goal and it was a priceless win despite the performance. So no complaints there from Reading's point of view at the moment. I mean, we come back to something we were talking about off camera before. Doesn't matter how they play. They just need to get enough points to get over the line. Barnsley, look, Sheffield United wasn't going to be the game to define their season. They beat Bristol City before, probably got a bonus point against Fulham, but still those Stoke and Derby games a few ago I mean they need to pick up a surprise win now. I want to go for the romantic score again. Barnsley are atrocious at home, only won five games at home this season. Reading are atrocious on the road, only won five games on the road this season. But Reading can see more away from home. So I'm going to go Barnsley to win two goals to nil, because I think once they score one, they'll shut up shot. Reading will counter, and the old Charlie Betts late second on the break. Two nil, Barnsley. And that's what you were going to go for. I literally wrote that down before you said two nil. <laughs> <laughs> um... I, I would have gone 2 0 the Barnsley. I think Barnsley would win this game. I think it, it could be a really tense final six, seven, eight games left. Yeah, but uh, God, I'm Reading. Obviously, it was a great strike for the uh, Reading goal. Clean sheet, though. That's the, that's another positive because then they can't defend for Toffee. They done really well to keep the clean sheet. But I'm going to black Barnsley to win by two goals to one now because you stole my two nil. Uh, right next up at, at Dean Court, it is Bournemouth versus Bristol City. Um, Bournemouth won three nil at Huddersfield. We said earlier in the Huddersfield game, and Bristol City drew two all with West Brom. And yet again, we talk about stories of the season for certain teams. Bristol City concede a stoppage time equaliser. Two shots on target against two goals. I mean... They conceded what, two again. I know. What more can you say? They always concede goals. And they did look better going forward. Bournemouth, by the way, were brilliant against Huddersfield. One of their best performances in a long time. Back to their best away from home. But as we've mentioned before, Bournemouth's odd little drops this season have normally been at home. They drew at home to Reading and Peterborough in two of their last three games. And they have struggled to put away those sides near the bottom. My issue is, obviously, as a Luton fan, we're desperate for Bristol City to get something. But the truth is, defensively, they're just not good enough. They're not even as good, probably, as the likes of Derby and that who held them the two. So I have to go for Bournemouth. I'd love it if Bristol City could get a result. Sorry, Bournemouth fans, but from a, a selfish point of view. But if we're being impartial, 3-1 Bournemouth, because Bristol City, they're going to concede at least two, aren't they? I've done it again. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally writing 3 1 down. 3 uh, 0 Bournemouth. Bristol City, the, wor- the third worst team of conceding goals with uh, 69. Uh, the worst form team in the Championship at the moment. Uh, one win in six. Bristol City are totally out of form. Bournemouth, it's my worry about Bournemouth because they were really they were excellent, at this, as you said, they were excellent against um, Huddersfield. They had to win that game. In theory, it should be a home banker, but with the games that Bournemouth have had when they they should be bankers. They've lost. Yeah. Or they dro- dropped so many points. So that's my worry that Bristol City could spoil the apple cart at the top of the table as well. But I don't think they will. So I'm going to go boom to win by three goals to nil. Sorry, Bristol City. Uh, right. Huge game. South Wales Derby. It's Cardiff versus Swansea at a Cardiff City Stadium. I don't know how this game's not on TV either. Um, maybe because both these teams are near the well, they're, they're safe. Uh, 16th and 17th in the table. Last game, Swansea, uh, they drew nil-nil with Birmingham and Cardiff didn't play. Swansea, lots of possession, didn't create a huge amount of chances with it. But defensively, massive improvements from what you've been saying the last few weeks. So They listen, uh, they listen to me. Any clean sheet is a positive for Swansea at the moment this season because I know they don't concede bucket loads of goals, but they're often atrocious goals to let in. I've been really impressed with Cardiff. We've seen a lot of managers in the EFL this season where they've been interims or temporaries and then they've been given the job permanently and then the club's had a dip. But with Steve Morrison, obviously he's got his contract for next season, we mentioned last time out, and they've actually come on really strong this season. And I know at the start of the year, I thought they were going to have a good season. Obviously the key for more fiasco took over, but they are starting to show signs of what their club is capable of. They've got some great young players in the team getting championship experience. They are improving at home, certainly in terms of goal difference. And Swansea, will they dare to make such a ridiculous error in the derby? I think Cardiff, if they keep 11 men on the pitch, will win. I'm going to go 
Thriller. Three two. To who? Cardiff. Oh, that's just right. I didn't write down. I didn't know which way. I don't know which I'm going to go for this one because the reverse fixture Swansea uh, beat Cardiff three uh, nil. It's probably one of Swansea's best results of the season. Obviously, any result against your rivals is the best result of the season. Yeah, Swansea drew nil nil. Everyone probably say it's a, a, a boring game, but for me personally. Watching the goals Swansea concede, um, I'm delighted that Swansea kept the clean sheet. They listened, they did <laughs> they play about with it. Cardiff have had obviously they didn't play, so I can't really talk about Cardiff. Um, oh, it's a derby, it's gonna be feisty, it's a three o'clock kickoff, it's not an early one. Oh, do I, I don't actually, I don't, I don't really know what we're going to go for. I'm gonna go championship folks score, I'm gonna sit on the fence this one. I'm unfortunately not, I'm not gonna pick a side in a derby, but I'm gonna go championship folks score line of one one. Right, next up, CBS, Coventry City versus Blackburn Rovers. Coventry drew 1-0 with Derby and Blackburn lost 1-0 away at Reading. Yeah, I know the Coventry-Derby game looked like a pretty regulation one or draw. It's actually a really good game, like lots of chances. Uh, ball in final thirds. It was fantastic as a neutral to watch the, the extended highlights of that. Blackburn, it's the same problem, isn't it? They just cannot score goals. Obviously, Ben Brereton and Diaz is on his way back to fitness. Will it make a difference? Will he be up to speed straight away? And can Blackburn get out the rut? Because this weekend, if they lose, they could be out the playoffs. And when you've played more games, when you've got teams in form behind, like Borough, like Forest, it can be a very difficult one to get back into. And Coventry at home, I know they've had their blips, but when they're at their best, they are scintillating at home. And how do you judge it? The last two home games, they got beaten comfortably at home to Hull and battered Sheffield United. So <laughs> you'd argue they raised their games against the bigger teams. They score a lot of late goals. And I think Blackburn will run out of steam. So I'm going to go for a lot of two ones this week. Two one commentary, late goal, the usual. Well, both these teams are not in the best of forms. Uh, yeah. Blackburn 15th currently in the form table the last six games and commentary 20th. So... Considering they both want to be up there in the playoffs, I think Coventry have just fallen away now. I think they might just fall out of it. Blackburn, as we said with Huddersfield, obviously them two have played the most games. Black, another Blackburn defeat opens definitely opens the door up for Mills, Rail, QPR and Forest, and maybe Millwall, maybe. Um, but I'm going to go 1-0 to Coventry. Uh, right, next up, Derby versus Preston at Pride Park. Derby drew 1-0 uh, with Coventry, and Preston didn't play. No, and we are into must-win territory for Derby now, particularly in the home games. What, they've got seven left. We're going to suggest they're going to probably have to get to at least 40 points. So that's 15 points out of 21. I don't see where they win five games. They have to win this one to have any chance. I will, I know I've done it before this season and been proven wrong, I will categorically confirm them as down if they lose this game against Preston. But Preston were absolutely atrocious at Luton last time out. And I know we mentioned it a bit covering Luton in the last weekend predictions, but it's one of the worst offensive displays, probably the worst since Ryan Lowe took over because their defence has been rock solid since he came in charge. But it was just an awful off day. They can't afford them. Now, they, it's almost like they got to the 50 point mark and decided that they were going to go on holiday. So hopefully for Derby's fans sake, they do. But I'd like to see a competitive game. Preston draw a lot. Derby draw a lot. I think actually they're the two sides with the most draws in the championship this year. So I've got to go championship's favourite scoreline. 1-1. One, one. Yeah, Preston are on uh, 15 draws and Derby are on 13. So, yeah, they are the two highest. It does say draw in a way, the last game between these two sides was a draw. Uh, that ended nil-nil. <laughs> Derby have to win. They have to push. I don't think Kazan Richards is fit. Preston, obviously, the last game was Loon. They could not play any more, any worse. <laughs> And we talk about the defending and the goalkeeping was absolutely true. They could not play any worse. So maybe it was the off night. Maybe it was just a cold Wednesday night down at the Kenny. They just couldn't handle it. Derby have to win. I think Derby might sneak it. I'm going to go two goals to one. Derby do like a late goal. I think it'll be a late one in this one. So two goals to one for the home side. Next up, it's another game. Why it's at three o'clock. But then again, it was three o'clock early in the season. It's Luton Town versus Millwall at Kenilworth Road. Um, Luton beat Hull 3-1 at the KCOM MKM and Millwall lost two goals to nil to Stoke. I'm going to say what I said three games ago, Craig, when Luton played QPR. We just don't beat Millwall. It's always 1-1 at home to Millwall. Always. Every time I can remember, it's one all at home to Millwall. So I'm really struggling with this because it's a big week for Luton because they then go away to Peterborough, who are right at the bottom. They then go away to Huddersfield the Monday night after, who are right up there in the playoff mix. 
and then Forest at home as well. So I feel like it's a must-win game, but I don't think they will. Millwall, let's take away a just bizarre game against Stoke because Stoke were one of the worst form teams in the championship. Millwall one of the best, and that's what the championship does to you. Before that, they've been brilliant game after game after game, five without conceding a goal. I think Luton are one of the most threatening attacking sides in the league now. We looked solid defensively under pressure against Hull in the first half, but we're not going to be able to rely on postage stamp free kicks every week. So I'm going to have to go one all. I have to, because there's no other scoreline you can predict, is there? I know they ended the hoodoo against Stoke Craig, but the QPR game has put doubt in my mind. I think I'm worried about this game more than I am with Forrest and uh, I don't know who we've got left to play up the top now. For, no, I'm not worried about Fulham. That's the second last game of the season. They're, they've already won promotion by the time that gets there. They'll, they'll be doing their trophy parade. Luton will have players back. Uh, Lockyer came back last week, last game. But the people that have been in this place have been superb. Dan Potts, uh, Kyoso, superb at centre half. And James then Bree at like, centre half. Gaines Bree, centre half, superb. And I've got, I've got to give praise on your dimmer as well. I think it's been superb as well in the wing back role. Millwall, yeah, they'll, they'll be disappointed with that 2 0 defeat. I think that the break also came at the right time for them. I think that they've had the same try and play game every, here, there, and everywhere. I think that defeat is probably good for them in a way. Maybe just. So, all right, let's come down. Let's start again. We've got the final eight games. So let's push. This will be a tight game. Really tight game. I'm going Luton to win by two goals to one. Just, there could be another late goal in this one. Uh, right, next up, Peterborough versus Middlesbrough at London Road. Uh, Middlesbrough lost 2-0 in the FA Cup against Chelsea. And Peterborough beat QPR by three goals to one. Uh, let's talk about Peterborough. Very good away performance coming from 1-0 down. Very good goals. Is survival on? I don't know. It's the same thing as Derby, isn't it? I know they've got an extra game in hand, but that is against Luton, which in theory should be a tough one. They need 14 points for me out of eight games, so they've got to start picking up results. The thing that does give me hope for this one, Craig, not just the performance against QPR, but the fact that Middlesbrough have largely been shocking on the road in the last couple of months under Chris Wilder. And they are susceptible. They're a very big physical side builders, brother, but they're susceptible to, pay, to pace on the break. Uh, Jack Marriott scored a cracking goal against QPR as well. So if they can reproduce that, they'll be happy. But Peterborough are just so bad at the back. And Middlesbrough, they're so strong from set pieces. They get balls into the box. They've always got two or three players arriving in the penalty area. And I don't know if Peterborough will be able to deal with that. And Middlesbrough, but as bad as they have been on the road, the last two results, they've got clean sheets. Peterborough have to win, but they're going to let in goals. I think this is going to be the most exciting game of the weekend. I'm going to go 4-2 to Middlesbrough. I think it's going to be bonkers. Uh, I don't think that. I'm going to go 2-1 to Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough obviously got to improve their way record, you said. Peterborough, oh, has Grant McCann finally got this team to click? Because there have been some okay performances. Like, they didn't disgrace themselves against Man City. And especially being at London Rake, it's always a level they're there. They need to start picking up points. They need to get these games in. They've got a big game on, uh, obviously on Saturday. They've got another big game on Tuesday night against Luton. Two teams who are obviously challenging for playoff spots. So they are going to be tough. You have to win every game. Now, as, you can't pick and choose when, when you're going to get your victories. You have to win every game. I don't think it's this going to be this one, unfortunately. Be a tight game, though. 2-1 to Middlesbrough. Right, West London derby, QPR versus Fulham. QPR, we just said, lost to 3-1 to Peterborough. And Fulham didn't play. Yeah, QPR, I don't know what's happened. And you were right on this one. I really thought that after the win against Luton, they'd kick on, they'd find some form. I know they've had terrible luck with goalkeepers and they're down to... Yep, yeah, they've gone down to about five. Now, I think they've got Kieran Westwood in, haven't they? But they've been in awful form. They're struggling home and away. They're coming up against a Fulham side, though, that are just starting to dip a little, maybe because there's not really any pressure on them whatsoever. Defeat of West Brom, draw away at Barnsley. And away from home, let's be honest, they're the best side in the league, but they haven't looked at the last couple of games. It's a big derby again. It's another one that could have been on TV for all the Fulham ones that shouldn't have been. <laughs> I'm going to go... Look, QPR, they proved it against Luton. They raised their game for the big feisty rivalries, and I think they're going to do it here. I can easily see QPR winning this game and then losing the next four. So I'm going to go to all... They won't hang on. Oh, I thought you said QPR were going to win that one. Um, yeah, I, I nearly did. <laughs> you uh, no, I disagree. I think Fulham are going to win by two goals to nil. They've had a bit of break themselves. So that's fine. No problem. QPR, I said this to you a 
privately and you strongly disagree. I say they're the weaker of like the six six seven teams that are challenging for playoffs. And I didn't rate them against Luton. They got very fortunate with the penalty and the corner. They did nothing really in that game, and then they go on to lose two more games after that. But the, the, in the manner of those defeats, they haven't been spectacular. One shot on target against Peterborough. And all due respect to Peterborough. They, they've been kind of the whipping boys for this season. But one shot on target is not good enough if you want to challenge for the playoffs or if you want to put promotion. Not acceptable, especially at home. And that, that's been coming. That, those, those sort of performances have been there for the last six, seven games. But like the Luton game, they got away with it that day. But they got found out again against Forest and found out against Peterborough. So they've got to be careful. The problem is now they've got to play Fulham, who scored 90 goals this season. Yeah, they've coasted a little bit for them, but they're, they're there. We know they're there. They'll celebrate easily in the final game of the season. So it's got, not going to be a problem. Uh, I think Fulham will win this game 2-0. Uh, right, the final game on Saturday is Stoke City versus Sheffield United. How does Stoke? They beat Millwall two goals to nil, and Sheffield United beat Barnsley by two goals to nil. Yeah, Sheffield United weren't brilliant. They weren't at their scintillating best, but it's an efficient performance. They got the goals. They won the game. And after the battering by Coventry and the struggle at Blackpool, they needed that result because it risked slipping away again for them. Good to see Sander Berger scoring again after I talked to him up a couple of weeks ago too. Stoke won a game. Stoke won a game. What on earth is going on? Uh, Millwall weren't great, but someone other than Lewis Baker scored and Stoke won. Did Lewis Baker score? He didn't score. He didn't score. He didn't score. It was an own goal and uh, Jacob Brown who got the goals. But... Uh... It was so crucial because, as I said to you, if Stoke had lost that game, I thought we might have a manager special in the international break. So it allowed us a week off, but I can't see them winning this one as well. Sheffield United are not bad away from home. They're a bit of a mixed bag. They obviously had a shocker at Coventry, but they're going to get something out of this. I don't know if they'll win it because Stoke still draw a lot of games. Championship's favourite scoreline, why not? Because I think as we get towards the running, there's going to be so many tight games where where teams stumble over the line, as we've seen so many years in the past. I think we're going to get to the point where the desperation will start, this is going to start yeah. kicking and they're, they're going to go for it and then they get caught out and then they can see the goal. I'm going to go 2-2. Two, two. It's two different styles of play. Uh, obviously, it's like a bit more direct compared to Sheffield United on the floor. But I'm going to go 2-2. Two, two. Because Sheffield United, late there, away from home, conceded a few sloppy goals. So, yeah, 2-2. Two, two. And the final game on Sunday is a West Midlands derby. It's, it's not on TV. It's Birmingham City versus West Brom at St Andrews. Birmingham drew 0-0 away at Swansea. And West Brom drew 2 all at Bristol City. Yeah, two strange games, really. Birmingham-Swansea, I mentioned it had a few chances each. There was nothing in it between them, really. West Brom were poor. They had a real chance to kick on. They'd beaten Hull. They'd come back from nowhere against Huddersfield, albeit assisted by a referee. They then were brilliant against Fulham. And then just when you feel like it's finally clicking, if they'd won that game, they're five points off the playoffs with a game in hand on Blackburn. And they're in a great position now. But I just think they're too inconsistent. It's a derby. It's going to be feisty. This one, more than any of the others, I'm pretty sure there'll be a red card in. Birmingham will probably take the opportunity in a big game to protest as much as possible, obviously against the ownership and all of that. And I think it will derail the game. I think it will be a poor one. I think it'll be low scoring. I could see it being 1-0 either way. And I'm going to go 1-0 to Birmingham against the odds. I'm going to go 2-1 to West Brom because West Brom do concede crappy goals, to be fair, but goals were not bad. Birmingham, good clean sheet. I, mean, I praise Swansea for keeping the clean sheet. It was another good. It was a good clean sheet for Birmingham. It's a derby. It's not an early kickoff though. It's a three pm kickoff on a Sunday. I don't know about this game. I'm going to go two one West Brom. Let's have a quick recap what we have predicted for this weekend's action, and there are seven two ones between the both of us that we think is going to be a very tight weekend. Uh, the only real standouts of our side. I think Bournemouth are going to be received by three guys nil. And Cody's going for a 4 2 win for Millsborough at Peterborough. And those are our predictions for this weekend's action in the championship. Do you agree with us or disagree with us? Let us know in the comments section down there. And give us your predictions. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the Honest Football Podcast, and you can follow us on Twitter at Honest Football Free. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>